Well, the whole trial was just a farce, and but the verdict was was the one that I had expected to be given. Now, do you feel that all the witnesses were brought into the case? No, two of the witnesses were being held in protective custody in Sheriff Strider's jail in Charleston. My first reaction when I saw that they they come in and said not guilty was unbelief, anger, revenge. And one of the reasons that, you know, I went back home was we had two guns. I just had the idea, hey, we could fight it out. My only problem was that there was no gun for me. But uh, I wanted revenge. I carried a chip on my shoulder for many years. It was obvious that uh, they had no trouble uh, deciding that they were to uh, let these men go free. And I, and I later heard that, in fact, the reason it even took an hour or whatever hour it, so it took was that they, they simply were trying to, to be correct about the way they delivered their answer. But the answer was a foregone conclusion. And then when they interviewed the foreman of the jury, he said, it wouldn't have taken us that long but they told us to make it look good. So we had some soda pop and beer and uh, waited a little while and then we came back with our verdict. You never expect anything but for them to be acquitted because that's Mississippi during that time. When they acquitted uh, Marlon and uh, Bryant, they crushed my dad. He just, he just couldn't, couldn't take it anymore. He, he came home that day and said, boys, we got to leave. Can't stay here. Basically, we had no law back in 55 in relation to black and white killing each other. Mr. Wright, the trial has been over for a week now. How do you feel about it after thinking it over? I don't know how to <laughs> Were you surprised, or did you expect the verdict of acquittal? I was, so I was thinking you weren't just like you meant. You weren't surprised at the verdict? I didn't surprise me. When did you come to Chicago? Monday night. Why did you leave Mississippi, Mr. Wright? Well, uh, after Friday night, those men came to my house. But I just wasn't satisfied no more there. I just got willing and ready to leave, and I left just as quick as I could. Men came to your house? Friday night, too. What did they say? Well, I've gone to bed, and I got restless through the night. And I got up and got in my car and went out to the church and stayed all night in the car. And a friend of mine told me that he was passing going home. Said the car drew up in my yard, and two white men was in it. And they got out the flashlight, just flashing all around the house, looking around the house. Of course, I didn't know anything about it, but I was just rest, got restless through the night. And the next morning, and I got up and went up to the house and just just fooled other crop a little I had there, and I just got in a, a ready to leave right now. And I just you can go back to the kidnap file. So I'll go back to that. I promised the sheriff I'll be back and say if I leave, I'm going back. <laughs> but after being I'm through with this city forever and ever. There are two kidnapping statutes in Mississippi. One carries a 10-year maximum in the state penitentiary. The other statute, which is patterned more or less after the federal Lindbergh statute, as we commonly refer to it, carries a maximum of the of death sentence. And the grand jury will be advised of the existence and of the terms of both statutes, and it will be their province to determine which, if either, of the statutes that they choose to indict on. That mean, Mr. Moore, right? We went there. We didn't see them at the kidnapping trial. We saw them at the regular trial, but not at the kidnapping trial. They weren't they wasn't even there. Crazy. And that point, how long that last? No more than 15, 20 minutes. What? We was out of there. The, the Four County Mississippi Grand Jury at Greenwood adjourned just a short while ago and did not 
return an indictment in the Emmett Till kidnapping case. That's the only comment I'm authorized to make at this time. You got him on kidnapping. You're looking at him. How can you say not guilty? I am Sidney Carlton of Sumner, Mississippi, one of the lawyers for J.W. Milam and Roy Brown. Represented them in the murder trial recently in Sumner, Mississippi. I've just received information that the grand jury of LaFleur County uh, returned a no true bill against them with the charge of kidnapping uh, of Emmett Till in LaFleur County. Frankly, I think that this is a result primarily of the interference in Mississippi and Mississippi affairs by outside interests and a result of the NAACP and their activities in trying to make something big out of just an ordinary uh, criminal affair in Mississippi. After the trial some five or six weeks ago now, we are still receiving in the Daily Mail threatening letters from all over the United States saying that justice was not done when no fair-minded jury in New York, Chicago, Detroit, San Francisco, or anywhere else would have convicted these two men on this scanty evidence which was produced. I know uh, that Milam and Bryant had help when they murdered Emmett Till. Number one, they recruited a black boy, uh, Collins, Collins, Leroy Too Tight Collins. He was seen on the truck restraining Emmett. That was the purpose of his being there. And uh, I heard later that he told the two men that he was having difficulty restraining Emmett, and they stopped and picked up another guy. At the time of Emmett Till's death, I was 13 years old. And me and my friends were walking down the streets, and we walked up and, uh, to the truck that uh, too tight, and Jim Lee was washing out. And I asked him what was the blood from, and he told me that it was from a deer they killed that night. But later on, I found out that it was not a deer. It was Emmett Till's blood. J.W. Milan told my father they went and picked Emmett Till up, and they was going to kind of like rough him up or beat him up a little bit and let him go. That was his story. But uh, Roy and Kimball really, really beat him bad, and things just really got out of hand. That was his story, but we know better. And uh, beat him up so bad to he asked Leroy Too Tight Colin and gave him the gun and told him to shoot him and get him out of his misery. My name is Henry Long, and I was supposed to have been involved with uh, immature uh, murder, but I wasn't. And, and I still can't figure out why they would have me involved, involved in, in that. And I know nothing about it, no more what was told. This woman named Mary, uh, she came up, she said, uh, Y'all heard about the, what happened last night? The no. And uh, they say, yeah, I said, uh, you know, uh, they of them uh, went over to Monty's and, and killed a boy and put him in the river. Put him in the river, the river black mouth. So uh, I said, no, we ain't heard nothing about that. And so uh, she said, uh, and uh, said, said, too tight, said, that shoe laying on. I said, that's a, that's a shoe that that boy had on, so they went to this boy's uh, uh, grandpa's and asked about him, said, Dad said, his granddad said, he's in there asleep. Said, what you want with him? Said, well, I'll wake him up. We're going to get him out of there and uh, take him and put him in the river down there. Said, he said, no. Said, no, the white folks don't do that. Now, that's what they say, he said. Now, uh, said, don't do that. So I'll, uh, if you let him stay here in the morning, I'll put him on a bus and send him back to Chicago. So no, no, they said, they, they say, they say, no, no, uh, we want him out of here now. And said, I think, I don't want to lie, I think they said that the, uh, one of them hit the old man, the boy's granddaddy. Said, no, you know, he, you know, I reckon he didn't want him to 